Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm Frank Yop, and today I'm talking with uh, Fahim Khan, who is the uh, Vice President of Business Development at Lyco uh, Geosystems. And uh, this morning we're going to talk a little bit about laser scanning. So uh, thanks for uh, joining me uh, this morning, uh, Fahim, and, uh, and talk about the laser scanning and how Leica is uh, playing a role in that, uh, that market. So. Laser scanning is becoming more and more uh, popular. I hear a lot about it. Uh, people want to uh, scan their uh, their existing asset, but I wonder that you know. I feel that these files that are created by scanning these plans must be phenomenal, huge. How do you handle this huge type of files and still keep a a performance for the customer? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an excellent uh, question, Frank. Uh, scanning started um, uh, over ten years ago. Uh, the, the first um, platforms that we produce delivered generated eight hundred points of measurement a second, and that was huge amounts of data at that time. Yeah. And uh, today, scanners produce a million points per second and true million points per second. So you're right. The problem is not actually reducing. The problem is growing. So today, our customers scan and you know, per hour gigabytes of data sets. And uh, what comes out of that exercise is a problem in a way that uh, the sensor providers have created. We are the ones who create these big data sets. So our software technology has been uh, equally improving over these years. And we started a fundamental technology project two years ago and introduced a technology called Jetstream, which essentially allows you to compress and stream these large amounts of data into much more efficient formats. So that bottleneck of large data set right. is largely completely under, under control now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and then, okay, so now we have the, the, uh, the, the asset scanned. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we do to, to add intelligence to the asset? So like uh, I can, for instance, uh, find a certain object, a certain uh, valve, a certain sure. pump, a certain piece of equipment. Sure. Uh, can, can you do that? Can you add intelligence Absol to these, these Absolutely, points? absolutely. And there are multiple ways and multiple platforms that you can uh, work in to extract this intelligence from the digital reality data. Uh, you could use it within the 3D design tools and use mathematical best-fitting algorithms to extract geometrical objects that you need. So let's say we've, we've scanned a pipe rack and I would like to extract the information and in, in, CAD geometry formats, we can run automatic extraction routines to extract those CAD objects out for structure, for, for um, uh, piping systems, and so on. Right. Or you can just say, I don't want geometry, I just want to add intelligence to this. Right. I can also review that digital reality data in a browser and then add intelligence to it and link it with third-party uh, environments. Uh, so one example would be within the fusion environment right. to connect the digital reality world, the real world with the with the information management world. Right. So how how do you make that connection then between the the point cloud and that information management? Plan? That's what I was actually looking for. You know, how do you make that connection right. between the point cloud and, for instance, a spec sheet of a valve right. or, or uh, a technum right. yeah. of the valve? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a fairly intuitive. A way for a customer to do this. So all they have to do is to look at that information, click on that specific object, and create a hyperlink uh, or a geotag is, is essentially what okay. has happened. Using yeah. these geotags, we create indexes right. of the data, and that geotag is also accessible within the information management role. We yes. can harvest these indices, and we can bridge the two roles together. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's I think important because I can see how you add value to your existing asset by scanning it. As is, as, as that, I mean, you, you scan it as the situation is today and then add information to it. So that will make the one and one is three, you know, that Absolutely. adds value. Absolutely. So how is, how is the, uh, the smart plant uh, uh, offering works with the, with the point cloud if you want to do designs like maybe a modification or an extension sure. on an existing sure. facility? Is, is that, that's possible, right? That, that's possible. That's, uh, so what, one, one of the things I think within Hexagon, uh, the benefits that we deliver to the end user is is closely developed synergistic solution. So the the different types of sensors that Leica Geo System provides is all integrated into Jetstream, and Jetstream essentially is this interoperability platform to power all the smart tools within within PPNM. So CloudWorks is the right. essential feature extraction tool sets that is part of S3D. And within a design review process, uh, we have a CloudWorks for a smart plan review. Uh, and within CatWorks, there are other capabilities and so on and so forth. But all of them are accessing the single source of truth, the same database shared to multiple users without any translation, any conversion. So we can scan once, capture, store once, and deliver to multiple environments right. all through the common interoperability right. platform. Right. 
Right, right. Yeah, and that actually leads me to the other question I have because I know coming from the engineering world myself that these big projects are, are seldom done in one office. You know, you have what we call work share. Right. We've got multiple contractors, DVs on projects right. that execute these larger projects. So let's say that you have scanned an existing facility. Is it then also possible or how, how can you configure that, that multiple offices actually working on parts of that plant? So that's an excellent question, uh, Frank. Uh, we, we definitely have customers who leverage the technology in ways that we did not think of before. Uh, we see owner operators uh, providing a shared access to that common single jet stream server uh, without having the data, the files to be shipped across the borders for security reasons, for control reasons. We also have individual companies, individual EPC firms that may have different locations working on the same project. Right. And because these are humongous data sets, they don't yes. want to ship them around. Right. Through this very optimized streaming technology, they can simply get access uh, around this work share environment and people can connect to it without the data shipping out of the office. Wow, yeah, that's good. That, that's very good. And, and, uh, and, and you said already there's a big data set of streaming. Do you have any experience or any views on, on the uh, performance if, if you do that? So let's say I have the, the, the database in Houston, in my Houston office, but I have also an office of my company in, in Europe. Right. Can I make the connection you said, but right. is, there a, you know, is the performance, is that a good performance over that uh, distance? So, so from a technology yeah. standpoint, it's, it's built around sort of a gaming uh, platform oh, okay. experience. We want the frame yeah. rates to be very high, we want the rendering rates to be very high. The only bottleneck, the weakest link is the, band, is the bandwidth yeah. between different locations. Yeah, so as sense. long as our customers invest in the right uh, infrastructure to power these technologies, they will scale and they will deliver. Right, right. And of course, when, when multiple people work on, uh, on the same project, they sometimes step on, to on top of each other. Right. Is there also uh, like a, a class detection or interference with the point clouds and the, and the new items that you put in there right. and maybe between point clouds? Right. No, uh, so absolutely, yes. So uh, going back to this work share collaborative yeah. workflow concept, we have the concept of uh, a limit box manager as an example. So I, as the admin, can create different areas of interest for different people to work in. Yeah. And they're all allocated to different people, but they all see each other's work too. Right. I can view what I'm doing and view what others are doing. And when there are some changes incorporated, I get to see what that, that has been done. Yeah. So there is this element of, um, of um, uh, work management and, and issue management built into the product. Uh, right, for sure. right. So, and, and how portable is it? With portal, I mean, you know, I am the owner and EPC does a project for me. Can I get uh, maybe the file uh, for, for review or so right, to, to, right. to look at it at home right. and uh, in my office yeah, and, so, uh, and check it out? So again, I'll say our customers are, are what drive us and our customers say they would like portable, they would like it on-premise, they would also like it in the cloud. They want everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what we've come up with is a, a, a portable solution which could be offered in a thumb drive, essentially. I ah. can package out the entire yeah. database, the entire technology on a thumb drive, wow, pass it to someone and they can great. run that application without any installation. Yeah, wow, that's or great. Or they can host it themselves, yeah. or they could use our hosted environment. So yeah. we have all options of deployment. Right, yeah, good. Now, okay, big projects, we talked about scanning a whole plant, you know, and, uh, and there are different methods scanning a plant. I, I believe you can even have a, an, an, a scanner on a, on a drone or, mm -hmm, that's right? True. Yes, yeah. yes. But there are also small projects mm -hmm. in a plant. Mm -hmm. So you know you just have a, have a small part of a unit that you uh, you want to revamp. Do you have a solution for the smaller sure. type of little you know project? Sure. They, they happen all the time. Sure, yeah. absolutely. And um, scanning is a fairly uh, a professional uh, activity that's been conducted for many years. And uh, but we realize that there are customers who, as you said, they want a simple, easy to use technology for a smaller. Uh, perhaps even lower accuracy requirements, uh, and then they want industrial-grade, accurate, um, robust platforms to capture advanced um, and complex projects. So we've introduced the BLK360 as an example, which is a great accessible technology for a, a very inclusive uh, customer base uh, where they can deploy the technology for digital documentation purposes, as an example. Right. But they can also combine that with uh, this professional series, scan station series, where they can get survey-grade, robust accuracy mm -hmm. as a framework to then combine the two technologies together and get the most from that experience. Right. And, and although you use the, the, the smaller scanner for smaller projects and the other scanners for bigger projects, 
the method, the software that you need is the same. You don't have to go and find other software for small projects. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah. And then for the user, we, we're actually introducing our next generation software at the conference. Announced tomorrow. I can't talk oh, too much okay. about this. Um, <laughs> but essentially, it's a drag, drop, done philosophy. So you drag right. the content from different sensors, drop it into the panel, press a single button. You should get a homogenous registered point cloud database oh, that you can use. That's great. Any other last uh, things you wanted to share before we close? No, I think this is a very exciting time. The technology is definitely becoming very, very accessible for lots and lots of industries. And I look forward to more people using uh, this technology in the days to come. All right, well, with that, uh, a big thank you for, uh, for, this, uh, for this talk, uh, Fahim. And uh, if you want to have more information uh, about this topic, you go to uh, hexconppm.com. Or if you want to see more episodes, you can go to uh, hxngtv.com. And uh, with that, uh, thank you.